Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Cyrex from Dota 2 Portal. Welcome to Dota 2 Learn to Play, Episode 7. In this episode, we will be covering everything you need to know about warding, and it will be the final installment in our intermediate section of the show. Now, let's be honest here, few things are more important in Dota than having vision of your opponents. At its core, Dota is a strategy game, and in order to make the best strategic decisions, it is key to have as much information as possible. While your team often has vision of the lanes due to the presence of creeps and towers, the lanes make up a relatively small portion of the map. Warding the other areas of the map gives your team a huge tactical advantage, but your stock of wards is quite limited and refills very slowly. Therefore, it is more important to place each ward in a place that gives you the maximum sight radius. Now, this guide is certainly not a comprehensive list of warding locations in Dota, but it covers all of the fundamental ones. Feel free to experiment and find your own useful locations. There are a few important places that should be warded during the game, depending on the stage of it. Rune spots. First and the most obvious place should be at the rune spots. In our last guide, we talked about the importance of the runes and the rune control, thus making this place extremely important. The two most important warding locations on the map are the cliffs that overlook the top and bottom rune spawns. Not only do these wards show your team what rune has spawned and where it has spawned, but they will also spot most enemies traveling from lane to lane for ganking. These wards boost your offense by giving your team rune control and boost your defense by spotting ganks. Doesn't get much better than that. There are a few ways to cover top and bottom rune, depending on the team in which you are playing. Usually, you will tend to spread light on both runes and the enemy territory as much as possible. To counter ward this place, you will usually place the Sentry Ward in the following way. Forests Wards can be placed in the enemy forest for two reasons. One, preventing neutral creep spawns, and two, spawning enemy heroes to pick off. Early in the game, it can be very beneficial to block a creep spawn, shutting off the enemy's ability to creep pull their lane. Jungling heroes are also very easy to pick off in the early game, so if you can spot them with a ward, it's not hard to go take them out and stun their farming. Late in the game, the forest is generally considered to be one of the safest places to farm, so having a ward there will often give your team opportunities to pick people off and then take a tower while you have an advantage. Here are some common locations for positioning wards. Counter warding is pretty hard in this case, because there are simply too many ways for warding the woods. Usually you will want to check two most common places for forest warding. Near the enemy base. Wards near the opposing base are nearly useless for the majority of the game, but when you are trying to push for victory, they suddenly become very important. It is often quite hazardous to push a base. You're fighting an uphill battle against a tower, and your opponents have plenty of room to come at you from all directions. A well-placed ward will let you know how your enemies plan to defend, and prevent your team from getting caught off guard. Picking off the player that was meant to ambush you from behind, because your team spotted him with a ward, can be the play that wins the game for your team. 
Always try to have a ward cover when you attempt a push. Be sure to place the ward while the enemy doesn't see you. Sneak up on their base through the forest and use smoke a few minutes before you push. They will never even realize that they need to counter ward this place. Basic facts about wards. Observer wards cost 200 gold per pack. A pack consists of two wards, which last for six minutes once they are placed. The replenishment period of the pack is six minutes. Sight is constant 1800 units during the day and the night. Sentry wards also cost 200 gold. You will also get two wards in one pack, but will have an unlimited supply of them. They last for three minutes and won't be bought because of vision, but for 800 units of true sight. They can spot invisible heroes and are usually used to counter ward, as it was mentioned previously in this guide. Random tips. As you can tell by the numbers, you can have a maximum of 4 observer wards placed on the map at the same time. That is, if you keep warding the map and buying the observer wards all the time. However, if you buy 4 observer wards and place them, they will expire in 6 minutes and you will only be able to buy one pack of those. So you should indeed be careful with what positions to choose in order to cover the most important areas of the map. Another random tip that goes beyond the warning repertoire is the fact that if your support hero does not die much, or not at all, he or she will be likely to produce a much more consistent vision through buying and placing wards than a feeding supporter would have. A quick hint to that would be the fact that you gain 67 gold per minute merely because you are playing the game, regardless of the hero. Let's take a look at a simple equation. 67 times 3 equals 201. Thus, it makes it obvious that if you stay alive for 3 minutes without buying anything or farming, you can afford one pack of either observer or sentry wards. With this guide, we are concluding our intermediate segment of the show. We hope that you enjoy your journey through the basic elements of the game and that you are prepared for the advanced segment. If you have any questions or advice, feel free to send us your feedback. We read every single comment that we get. My name is Cyrex and I'll see you in the next episode. Have fun and good luck!